I think it has an increasing influence and in a significant number of our patients our initial treatment is influenced by the genetic background of their tumor. So the most obvious answer in lung cancer is uh, when we discover someone who has specific mutations in their epidermal growth factor receptor. There are individuals, again, who ha are, have these mutations who are going to be exquisitely sensitive to pills or lotnib or gefitinib as opposed to chemotherapy. So that influences their frontline therapy now. That's the new frontline standard. Similarly, if we see a translocation of EML4-ALK, while we can't give them frontline therapy with crizotinib, we keep that in mind so that eventually we can put them on a clinical trial where they'll benefit from this agent. Now, there are other oncogenic changes where we don't have positive options. For example, KRAS. KRAS is probably the most commonly uh, mutated oncogene in all of cancer. Only P53, the critical tumor suppressor gene, is mutated more often. Unfortunately, in general, most of us believe that KRAS mutations in lung cancer portend to worse outcome. That's a difficult piece of information to relay to a patient, particularly early in your interactions with that patient, to say, this is a mutation that likely portends a poor outcome, but we don't have a targeted therapy for it. What it does do, however, is it drives our goals and our needs in developing therapies targeted to these specific mutations. We also know, for example, if someone has a KRAS mutation, they're far less likely to benefit from gefitinib or orlotinib. So that influences not only our first line, but our second and third line choices for lung cancer patients. There are similar examples in breast cancer with uh, HER2 new a gene amplification, actually in lung cancer, a small percentage of patients, 2 to 3 percent, may have HER2 new mutations and they're sensitive to Herceptin. So I think this is a, an emerging paradigm where increasingly, as part of studies, and we're part of a 12, 13 institution uh, Go grant led by Paul Bunn, where we're starting to do assays of lung cancer patients' genomes, and ultimately we're Developing, uh, developing therapies based on the cancer's genome, not the individual's genome, but the cancer's genome, uh, I think you're going to see that eventually being adopted into clinical practice in the next four to five years.